Right, uh, so, uh, I'm gonna... So our next speaker looks even more like he's in the Matrix. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, the second ever museum show off. Are you ready for him? Yeah! yeah. Uh, my name's Terence Eden, uh, and I'm going to tell you about QRpedia, which is a thing I invented for museums. And then I'm going to embroil you in an international conspiracy. Are you all ready for that? You happy? Yeah. Yes, yeah. good. Okay. So, let's hope this button here works. Oh, it did! Oh, my microphone elevates. So, um, <laughs> this is the uh, Rosetta Stone. My time is already over. This is the Rosetta Stone. This oh, is, man. as far as I'm concerned the best exhibit in any museum ever. Now, I know that a lot of you come from some really awesome museums, but it's, the Rosetta Stone for me is just brilliant. I absolutely love it. And here we see, uh, in olden days, I'm guessing olden days by the hats, um, <laughs> learned men gathering around the Rosetta Stone to learn and to discuss and to, and to seek its wisdom. And that, that's pretty cool. That's, that's kind of what a museum should be to me. Uh, but uh, has anyone visited the Ro Rosetta Stone recently in the British Museum? Yeah. This, yeah? Good. This is this is what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Tourists. Lots of You can't even get close to it. If you did get clo close to it, it's covered in bulletproof plexiglass. And ah, oh, it's just really, really frustrating. There's just so many people around there. And you feel guilty standing in front of it because there's another busload of French school children who come and... Uh, can't. I'm in my happy place. So, that, that's not the worst thing. I, I can cope with tourists. It's, it's nice that people want to see exhibits. But um, if, you, if you walk around the back of the uh, Rosetta Stone, and you think, I want to learn all about this amazing, amazing artifact. This is what you see. Three paragraphs of text. Three. For the Rosetta Stone. I mean, the Rosetta Stone is, frankly, it, it's the best bit in the British Museum. And they've only got three lousy paragraphs of text in English. That's rubbish. That's, no, I'm sorry, is there anyone here from the British Museum? Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> so, you see, I decided to improve this. I thought, I'm not standing for this, I'm going to make this better. So, um, now, a little bit of advice here. Technically, technically, it's illegal to go and stick things on the Rosetta Stone. Um, <laughs> But I did anyway. So this is a QR code. You may have seen them in uh, magazines and on posters, and uh, they're really cool. You get your phone, any, any smartphone, you download a, a QR reading app, they're, they're all free, and you scan that, and it takes you to a website. And that's brilliant. You know, re really cool, really simple. So at, at a stroke, you can uh, direct people from a physical object to a virtual object. So what this one does, what QRpedia does, is you scan that code, and boom, you're taken to the mobile Wikipedia page for that object. Scan the code, the Rosetta Stone, oh, I can read an encyclopedic article all about the Rosetta Stone, I can learn, I can go and see who discovered it and click on their name and go on one of these wonderful tangential journeys through uh, Wikipedia on your phone, you don't have to clog up a, a museum. So, uh, yeah, that, that's the first thing I did. Now, I thought that was pretty cool, but it turns out there's a, there's a small problem. For reasons best known to themselves, the, uh, the peoples of the world speak a multitude of languages. Um, now, I know, I know, they should all learn to speak English or Latin. But, um, but they don't. Um, and now I, I, I did some digging as uh, I was speaking to the, uh, the Science Museum, the V&A and various other uh, museums. It turns out in London, roughly 50% of visitors to London museums come from overseas. Now, some of them will be from uh, America and India and other places with, uh, uh, who, speak, who speak English, uh, but a lot won't. And don't forget, there's a lot of people uh, in England who don't have English as their first language. So what to do? We can't just have everything in English. That's rubbish. So I made QRpedia detect the language of your phone. And this is how it works. If you go there with a uh, German, uh, which is what you see there, you scan, you, there's only one code, there's just one code there, scan it with a German phone, it goes, the Stein von Hoset! <laughs> Uh, it's English, it's the Rosetta Stone. Uh, and if it's Japanese, um, it's the Rosetta Stone in Japanese. Um, as for, so one code, uh, any, any language that your phone is set to, scan it, and that's the language you, you get to. You don't need to choose from a drop-down list or uh, configure anything. It's just scan straight there, straight away. Um, so I thought it was pretty cool. This is how it works. So um, you go to the QRpedia website, which is qrpedia.org, uh, and you paste in the uh, Wikipedia article that you want. And that's it. You get a QR code, which you can download. It's in high res, and you can put it on labels. Uh, you can load up to poster size. You can do whatever you want with it, because it's free. This is my gift to you. Any museum, art gallery, anything that you want, 
absolutely free. Um, you just go website qrpedia.org. You writing it down? Good. Qrpedia.org. <laughs> paste it in, and you get uh, a lovely QR code for you to do stuff with. Um, so we did the first trial in Derby Museum. Anyone from Derby Museum in? That's a shame. It's a brilliant museum. You should go up. It's um, uh, it's in Derby. Um, and we um, so so we did some trials uh, with them about this time last year, and we learned some really interesting things. One is that if you stick a QR code on a pigeon, people will scan it. Um, but but we, no, we, no. So th this is something that, that we found that we haven't figured out, which is if you put a QR code down there, people have to bend over to scan it. So, so don't do that. If you put a QR code sort of at, at this height, at eye level height, all the kids who want to scan it have to jump in queue. So uh, when all those school kids have sort of been bussed in and really, you know, have, have to learn about stuff, they can. They can scan with their phones. Uh, this is for Juan Miro uh, Fondacion uh, in Barcelona. So they had a big exhibit of Juan Miro's paintings. Um, and so we stuck them up all over there. And this, what's particularly good about this is um, in Barcelona, the uh, primary language is Catalan, uh, not Spanish. And there's not a lot of Catalan content on the web, apart from on Wikipedia. So this meant that all the people uh, from Barcelona who, who spoke Catalan could go scan it and read an article in Catalan. Everyone else scan it, read the article in English, French, German, Chinese, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so this is the town of Monmouth in Wales, city of Monmouth, I think, uh, in Wales. Uh, and we're putting 4,000 QR codes, QRpedia codes, all over Monmouth with the help of uh, Monmouth Council. Uh, because it's a really historic town. And so uh, where there's a, an ancient bit, you know, we'll stick a QRpedia code on there. Really help uh, inc increase tourism, a uh, bit of civic pride. All lovely. Um, my next slide going to go. Go next slide, go. Ah, oh, this is awesome. That is a... Uh, European lynx. It's a big cat. I love big cats. And this is in Sofia Zoo in Bulgaria. So the QRpedia codes work in zoos, in museums, in art galleries. Basically, any any sort of cultural institute uh, that you run or you work in uh, can have these codes. Uh, and what was particularly good about this was this was done by volunteers uh, at the local zoo. People just like you. Uh, it, it's used worldwide, we're getting scans from all over the world, lots of tourists coming and scanning different countries, that's pretty cool. Uh, we're also doing interesting things like, you know, uh, making the codes a bit more interesting, so in this case putting Che Guevara in there for a, a Che Guevara exhibit. Uh, and we were announced uh, a few months ago to be one of the top four most innovative companies in the UK by the Smart UK project, which we thought was pretty awesome. So um, this is what I want to say, is that QRpedia codes, they're absolutely free and they can work anywhere, anywhere, zoos, uh, archaeology, places, uh, what else have I written down? Blue plaques, everywhere around the world. And this is where I'm drawing you into a vast international conspiracy. Because we want you. Um, I'm going to hand, hand some of these out. Uh, please take one, pass it on. Uh, this is, this will tell you how you can get involved in QRpedia. You can just uh, go to the website and start doing this. If you work in a museum, just uh, start doing it. Just just go paste in, you know, work out, or give us a call and we, we can help you with this. If you don't work in a museum, um, Avery labels are very, very cheap. Now, it would be it would be irresponsible of me to say you should do this yourself and stick them up in museums. That would be that would be wrong. Always ask permission first. Um, or no, 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 always ask permission first. Uh, so, my name is Terence Eden. This has been QRpedia. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen.